So hello. Um, uh, I would like to start with a couple of quick questions. Uh, how many of you have ever written a build system? All right, almost half the audience. Uh, how many of you have uh, used or uh, tried to modify the GHC build system? Well, again, quite a lot. How many of you love this? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, there's one hand. <laughs> so we are going to, to fix this, and um, hopefully you'll have the new build system even more. So this talk is about a new build system for GHC. In the title, we are making a rather general claim about build systems. Uh, but we are using GHC as our primary motivation and working example, because GHC is a very a uh, big piece of software. It's uh, 25 years old. It uh, has hundreds of developers. It's, uh, it's very large. It's one million uh, uh, lines of Haskell code and you know, some C code and even Perl and um, uh, Python. It's, uh, the, build, the build process is, uh, is non-conventional. It's organized in stages. So we actually compile the source code with three different versions of GHC. First, we compile it with the bootstrapping compiler that's installed on the machine. Uh, we build an intermediate version of GHC, which we call the stage one compiler. Then we use it to compile the source code again to build the stage two compiler. And that's, what, uh, the, that's the result of the build system. We sometimes use stage two compiler to compile the code again, just as a self-test. We hope that the result will be the same. The stage two and stage three uh, 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 binaries will match. And we also build GHC in multiple possible ways. So we can build it with profiling information, without profiling information, with debug, without debug, Etc. So there are a lot of uh, different combinations. Uh, as far as I, uh, if I count correctly, there are 18 possible uh, build ways that the current build system supports. And we use 30 programs in the build process, compilers like GCC or GHC, uh, some uh, parser generators like Alex and Happy and many others. Non-surprisingly, the current build system is complex. Uh, it's, uh, it's using non-recursive make. It's a fourth major rewrite, so almost from scratch. There were uh, four different implementations developed uh, continuously. There's a lot of engineering effort that gone into this. Uh, it's fairly big also. It's 200 make files spread across 10,000 of lines. And uh, it's organized as three build phases, not to be confused with uh, stages. So phases are used to deal with dynamic dependencies in, 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 that make doesn't really support very well. And I'll talk about this later. It's uh, highly user customizable because GC developers use it in multiple uh, different ways and modes and scenarios. And it works uh, and it's great, uh, but there is a other problem. So that's what you come across if you open the build system. So I haven't looked at it first. Uh, I agreed to do this project, but then I, I saw this and I was in horror. <laughs> so there's just three lines. So I, I, there are some line breaks here, like $19 per line. And this is about average of what you get. And uh, I don't want to criticize the authors, uh, Simon Marlow. Uh, uh, yeah, I think he did an incredible job with the tools you had. But um, obviously, we need to do something about it. And uh, the kind of uh, the, the, the immediate problem they face is that Make is not really a good programming language to write you know, large software projects. It uses a horrible programming model of you know, global namespace of mutable string variables. What could be worse? Uh, so you, even numbers have to be encoded into strings, right? and not to mention arrays and maps. You have not, no encapsulation information hiding uh, whatsoever, and the variables are spliced into make files. So if you have a space or a colon in your variable, uh, you're in trouble because there are special characters. To expand the variable, you use a dollar. To get a dollar in the expansion, you use double dollar. To get double dollars in the expansion, you use quad dollars. That's where all the dollars come from. Right. So. What are we doing about this? So there, uh, apart from what I mentioned, there are other problems that we need to solve. The problems from, from one to five, uh, I don't want to go into details, they're in the paper. That's what we call accidental complexities. They are not the, the result of the problem domain per se, they're the result of uh, using the wrong tool. So make is just not a really good tool for writing big build systems. Uh, so we solve this problem by just using a better tool. And the sixth problem is what we call the essential complexity of our problem domain. It's uh, constructing build command lines that we pass to the uh, various programs that, that we use to build the GHC. So we, we use functional program, programming to build uh, scalable, design scalable abstractions for build systems. And we solve problems one and five uh, by just using uh, Shake library. It's a Haskell library written by Neil Mitchell, who is co-author of this work. It's, uh, it's a library for writing build systems, and it works much better on, on at this accidental, at solving these accidental complexities. And we also develop an, another small DSL uh, built on top of Shake to handle 
uh, this, uh, this essential complexity of uh, computing command lines. And I'll talk about this in more detail. Let me briefly introduce you to Shake. So uh, by the end of this talk, at least uh, you, you learn how Shake works and you will write your next build system in Haskell. So it's a simple build system uh, uh, expressed using Shake. So here we invoke Shake with default options. The so options are like how many threads you want to use when building. You can, of course, change them. So on the right-hand side, you have uh, the rules monad, which is used to specify top-level targets and define build, build rules. So here we have the single top-level target. We want to build uh, a foo.object file. And uh, here this is, the, is the, the rule that we have. It's a pattern rule, so it can build any object files that live in the top directory from C sources. So how do we build a, a, an object file? Um, we define this rule using this percent greater operator that on the left-hand side takes a file pattern. On the right-hand side, it takes a function from files to actions. So given a file that matches this pattern, we specify how exactly, what actions do we need to perform to build it. So action monad is uh, just an extension of IO with uh, some additional functionality. So what exactly do we do? First, we need to compute the source name of the file we, we, we compile to produce the object file, and we, uh, we just replace the extension .o with .c. And kind of one of the first wins, we, we can use you know, various libraries developed by the Haskell community. You don't need to reinvent the wheel and encode this in make. So we're just using the standard file pass manipulation library to replace the extension. There is this operator, uh, dash uh, angle backers dot. Then we declare a dependency. We are saying that this source file is our dependency, and if it changes, the next time you run build, build system, it needs to, the, 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 this build rule needs to be rerun. And then we say how exactly we build. The object file, we just invoke GCC with usual uh, parameters, uh, dash C uh, source, uh, dash O object file. So if any questions, just ask. Uh, didn't get it? Just the name. Uh, want uh, tells what we want the build system to build at the, end of the at the end of the process. So we want to produce just a single object file in this case. Or for example, in the case of GHC build system, we want to build GHC. The need is a local kind of dependency. So uh, in order to build a, a particular object file, this is what we need. Does that answer your question? Uh, sort of, yes. Yeah. So the, the global uh, results you want to build during the build. And uh, in each build rule, we have some local dependencies. So if either of the dependencies change, we need to rerun re this rule to you know, bring the, uh, the, it back to the consistent state. Right, so uh, I'll, I'll show you how we you know, migrate from make to shake and the, the easy quick wins we have from this. So at the fair point, we should mention that the, the build rule expressed in shake is more, more verbose than, than the equivalent in make. Right, so the make one, uh, because it's, it's not an embedded language, so it uses a very terse syntax, very convenient for writing build systems, but not really, not, not really you know, scalable for something more complicated. So if you, are, if you have a very simple build system, by all means use make. It works uh, great for, for simple build systems. But if you uh, really need to scale for a large software project, you, 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 you better pick Shake because it scales much better, as I'll show in a couple of examples. So here's, we would like to modify our simple build rule to change the command line for particular uh, source files. For example, we would like to pass the optimization flag dash O2 if we are compiling a source file which lives in a library subdirectory. So it's very hard to do it in Mac. I mean, it's possible you can use markers. It leads to very you know, hard uh, to maintain code. Uh, but in Haskell, we can just use functions, right? So let's just uh, refactor our code so that we don't use a hard-coded command line. We just put it inside a function, GCC arguments, which has the source and object file as parameters. It sticks them to this list. And also, it uh, does some you know, non-trivial computation on the source file name. It checks whether it matches the file pattern. If it lives in this lib subdirectory, we add this extra flag. And we just call this function. So it's, it's very easy to do it in Haskell. It's, very, it's not that easy to do it in, in make in a maintainable way. Another example, dynamic dependencies. Uh, here in our build rule, we only specify the source file as our dependency. But actually, in reality, most uh, C source files actually have, have some hash include uh, of header files. And if either of, of your included header file changes, you actually need to rebuild the object file because it can change. So how do we specify the dependencies? Uh, the usual way is you run GCC in this uh, dash mm mode. What it does, it scans the file, the source file. It finds all the hash include statements there and dumps 
the list of uh, files in, in, a, in a separate file, which you can read and kind of uh, use information in your build system. It's very easy to read this file in Haskell. You open the file, you parse it, and you feed the result, results to the need. So you register this extra file as your dependencies. It's not straightforward to do it in Make. Uh, the solution in Make is you uh, generate this file also by writing GCC, and it uh, creates sort of a Make file, which you then include in Make and re restart the Make from scratch. So now you have some additional information in your build system which you can use. So in Make, you, you, that's the only way you can specify dynamic dependencies because uh, you can, the other choices, you just list them statically. So then whenever you're changing your C source file, if you're adding a new incl include statement, you need to modify your build system, which is not very robust and uh, hard to maintain. Um, let me just give you a, an idea of how actually we, how actually Shake solves the problem of dynamic dependencies. Here's an uh, example of a, uh, it's a subgraph of the GHC dependency graph. Here we have the lexer.hs file, which is built by Alex from uh, some source. It in imports some Haskell files like util.hs, or it also hash includes some header files like GEC program, GEC platform. So they all are dependencies of this lexer object. This is the first layer of dependencies, but this lexer object ends up eventually in an archive, in a library of objects. And to find out what goes into this library, you actually need to parse this gc.cabal file which contains various metadata about the, the package. Uh, in particular, in this case, this lexer is, is a file in the compiler package. So this is a sec second layer of dynamic dependencies. So in order to implement the dynamic de dependencies in make, you have to arrange your build system in three build phases. So in the first phase, you find out the first layer of dependencies. You generate a new make file. You restart yourself. Now you have this additional information. You find the second layer of dependencies. You generate a new make file. You again restart. And finally, you've got all the information you need, and you build the GC and all the libraries. So how does Shake handle this? So on the left-hand side, we have the algorithm that Shake uses. So Shake stores dependence information in uh, a persistent database, uh, which contains uh, there is the dependency graph computed in the previous successful build. So whenever you want to build a new target, you look up its de dependencies in the persistent database. The lookup can fail if you have never built this target before. In this case, you just build it. Uh, if the lookup succeeds, it returns to the list of dependencies you had in the previous time. Now, what can happen? The, uh, the T maybe doesn't exist because you deleted it, so you need to restore it in this case, you rebuild. Maybe it changed because you edited it, then again, you have to rebuild it to restore it into a consistent state. And if any of the dependencies is not up to date, again, you rebuild. And how we rebuild, we find the build rule that matches the target by searching through the build rules defined in the rules monad. You run the corresponding action and record all the needs that were called. And that, uh, these needs, that is, a, that, that is the list of your dependencies, newly discovered dependencies. Maybe this list has changed because you added a new import. So you need to update the database with the newly recorded dependencies. So that's how we build a target with Shake. So there are some quick wins. We have dynamic dependencies and uh, all, all other sorts of you know, non-trivial dependencies that we have in the build system. Um, also some control over concurrency. I, I don't have time to go into detail. Please read the paper if you're interested. I'll, I'll uh, spend the rest of my talk uh, explaining how we deal with essential complexity in the, in the GHC build system. It's computing the various command lines we need to pass to builders. Here's a snippet from the old build system that computes the command line we need to pass to the Haskell compiler, to GHC. So that's what HC opts stand for. It's the options we pass to the Haskell compiler. And there are various kind of, uh, conditional options there, conditional uh, arguments. For example, depending on the current way, if the way is profiling, so that's what P stands for, if the way, way we build GHC is profiling, we need to pass their static dash, dash prof as our uh, arguments. Otherwise, we don't. So if we are building a file which belongs to the base package library, base library, uh, and you're using stage one compiler, you also need to pass this unit ID base argument. And there are a lot of other similar cases. There are 30 more uh, configuration patterns like this. It is possible to write it, to express it in, in make. Uh, yes, there is a little bit, little bit of noise due to dollars. But the main problem is not this. The main problem is it's really hard to extend uh, and uh, does, it's not very compositional. So for example, if you would like to add, modify these way specific arguments to handle a particular file in a special way, to pass a, a different set of arguments for a particular file, you will have to extend this 
kind of you have to encode this pattern matches in the names of variables. So you don't actually have you know, much to work with in terms of abstractions and make. So you have to encode this in the name of the variable, and that leads to complications because you have to change you know, the whole build system if you'd like to add a new special case. So we develop a, a, a embedded DSL to handle this. I'll try to briefly explain how it works. So hooray, we don't need to use strings. We can use uh, normal Haskell data types to describe things we work with. So we have you know, packages, stages, and ways uh, that are data, data types, and we put them together in a context. So the context captures uh, a particular way you build a file. So as I mentioned, they can be way-specific arguments, they can be package-specific arguments, etc. So they all are uh, in the context. And there are, if you just count the number of inhabitants of these data types, there are like three, more than 3,000 possible combinations. So that's where the, the, the complexity comes from. Each invocation of the GHC can, have, can be potentially slightly different because of different contexts. Also, obviously for different builders, you want to compute different command lines. So it also gets multiplied by the number of builders you have. So each invocation of a builder is fully described by a target. So what is a target? It uh, specifies in which context we are going to build the file, so maybe compile it. Which builder we are going to use? Is it going to be GHC or C compiler or Alex or something else? What are the inputs that we need to provide to this builder? Maybe source files or something else. And what are the outputs that we expect? Here's an example, the prelude target. So prelude is a file that lives in the library slash base directory. It belongs to the base package. And in this case, we would like to build it in the profiling way and we would like to use the stage one GC compiler. So the input is the Haskell file, and the output is some build directory, and the extension is p underscore o, because this, we are building it in the profiled way. So we want to go from this target to a command line. Somehow we would like to have a function which takes the target and produces a list of strings, perhaps doing some uh, computation, the action monad. Maybe it needs to look up the configuration files. Uh, the actual command line is much bigger. It probably wouldn't fit on the screen because we pass quite a lot of arguments to GEC. But we would like to get something like we, we invoke the GEC stage one builder. We pass some optimization option. We pass the prof flag in this case because we are building in the profiling way. We pass the source file and the, the resulting object file. So, uh, this is so we, we have a lot of functions like this that are, that are from targets to lists of strings in the action monad. And uh, many of you will probably recognize this pattern. This is just a reader monad, right? And that's exactly what we use to compose these descriptions of uh, command lines. It's a, uh, we have a, a type synonym x per a, which is a computation that reads the target, does some computation in the action monad, and returns a value of type a. And uh, one possible way to use it is uh, here's an expression that computes uh, the, the previous uh, command line on, uh, that I showed on the previous screen. It always adds O2. It conditionally adds dot prof and uh, adds the uh, input and output files to the command line. We would like, so this uh, pattern of conditional dependencies uh, occurs very often, so we'd like to have a better syntax for this uh, and uh, kind of for, for easier uh, refactoring. And we introduce predicates, which are expressions that compute booleans. So we would like to write something like way profiling, which will be a predicate that will return true if we are currently building the file in the profiled way. So how do we implement it? It's really easy, we look up the current target and we check that the the way we are building it is the one that we pass as a parameter, so it will return true if it matches. And there are other similar predicates that uh, allow you to check the current stage, package, etc. So we apply these predicates using this operator question mark to an expression. And what we do, we evaluate the predicate. And if it's true, we return the expression without any modifications. Otherwise, we return the empty expression, so we skip it. So we have an example here. Prof is an expression, which is a conditional expression. It returns prof, it adds this prof to the command line only if we are in building the, in the profiling way. Otherwise, it skips this option. Uh, so we actually need uh, something more complicated than that because we would like these expressions to be modifiable by users. So users would like to add their own command uh, line flags, perhaps, and also to remove some of the flags that we've added. So we actually, instead of uh, uh, readers that produce lists of strings, we actually use uh, difference lists, so functions from strings, of, uh, uh, list of strings to list of strings. So we have some convenient uh, functions that allow us to append a list of arguments to a build command, uh, append a singleton, or remove arguments from command line. And, he, and, and that's how the, the result looks after we apply all these abstractions. So we have, we always add O2 to the GHC arguments, 
if the current rays profiling, we add dash prof. And uh, otherwise, we, uh, we always add the, the input and output files. And th this, this uh, whole expression is conditional. It only makes sense if we are using the GHC builder. Otherwise, we skip it. And we put all these uh, kind of command line descriptions in the same expression, and we attach uh, the user modifications to it. So args contains, so, and contains the full expression. So I'm, I'm, I have to stop now. That's the final slide. Uh, we are building the target by finding the, uh, the path of the builder. We need this builder because we can, it, it may be possible that we, the build system actually builds this builder. So we need to make sure it's actually built by the time we use it. This function checks that uh, the track, tracks changes in the, in, the, in the build system. So if we, add, if we modify the build system and add a new argument, only the uh, invocations of the builders that uh, were affected will be rerun in the subsequent run. Then we extract the list of arguments by running the reader monad. We provide the target, and we, uh, we extract the relevant arguments from the expression, and we run the builder using this list of arguments. So we implemented this. It works. It, we can build this stage to GHC, what we want. There are still many limitations. And please you know, uh, uh, help, if you, if you like, to, to, to uh, have the build system sooner. Uh, we've done some qualitative analysis. Uh, the new build system rebuilds, uh, doesn't do uh, many unnecessary rebuilds that the old build system does. And also works faster on the zero build and on the full build, uh, particularly faster on Windows. Uh, for some reason, make is really slow on Windows. Uh, and it's also faster on Linux. So uh, if you're interested in the details, please read the paper. I want to end with this painting by Peter Bregel, which I think uh, very nicely illustrates complexities we have to deal with build systems. It's a huge engineering artifact, and there are a lot of builders that, have, that talk different languages, and we need to, need to orchestrate them somehow. And there is this uh, king that orders the construction, and there is me, if you can see, uh, asking, <laughs> asking for a placement at Microsoft Research, and the king says, build JHC. That's it. Thank you. Questions? Uh, right down here at front, please. Um, so while well, he's getting the microphone, um, what's the timeline for this? Will it be the default? Will it replace make? When will it replace make? Uh, well, we, we would like to, to be the default build system soon. Uh, the timeline is difficult to predict. I hope it will be a six months project. It's now about two years since I started. Um, so I hope uh, it will be managed by the next year. And it will replace the make system, or will, will we have two? To, to replace. So we, we would like to get rid of the old build system, yeah, eventually. Hi. I'm a beginner, and I sorry, I lack the technical sophistication. But just curious, um, what do you think of Nix, N-I-X? The, I've heard of the Nix OS, you know, you know Nix packaging system? Yep. The people are discussing. Um, using Nix natively to uh, directly to build software, and I was wondering if you've considered Nix for building GHC. Um. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure how Nix by itself helps. So you still need to solve a lot of complexities in the build system. So how to build, uh, construct the command lines. Okay. So maybe you know, in the combination, it will be you know better somehow. But I don't really know how to answer your question. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So over here, yeah, Alex, um, do you have a list of things that need to be done for this to replace the existing build system? Yeah, so there are 46 open issues on GitHub. Um, 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 I will be happy if somebody can help me. So, um, you, well, does it um, include cross-compiling, for instance? Uh, cross-compilation is one of the issues, yeah. So uh, your build scripts are written in Haskell, and GHC is written in Haskell. Why do you go through the command line to invoke one from the other and not just a Haskell function call? Hmm, interesting. So you're saying we could just use GHC API? Well, you're using that untyped interface, essentially, in the middle, right? That's right. Well, uh, GHC is just one of the builders, right? We still have to handle 29 of the remaining ones. So we could but probably- But all of those are written in Haskell, too, it seems, right? Alex and what, what not. You're right. So, Maybe it's possible to, to get rid of this you know, intermediate uh, state at some day, but uh, we'll probably still have to handle a lot of builders. Okay. But, but I, I see your point. Yeah, maybe it's possible. But there's three versions of GHC. Yeah, so, so it's not clear uh, how to do it, but, but maybe it's possible. I mean, backpack is not going to take care of that problem. <laughs> backpack. Well, 
anyway. So. <laughs> okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.